So here we have a triangular truss with a load P on the top joint and the bottom two joints are held with support by a pin support and a roller support and they are three meters apart and the angle between those two are 60 at both ends. And so what we need to do is we need to find what load P is given that the max tension in the members can be 2 kilonewtons and the max compression can only be 1.5 kilonewtons. So that's what we're going to go in this video. If you find it helpful, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe. So the first thing we need to do is we need to draw a free body diagram of what's going on here. And that means we need to draw our known forces and our unknown forces and establish a coordinate system. And so we're going to draw that up here that this is our x direction and this is the y direction. And we have our members here, a simplified version of it. And this is load P and we have our reaction force. And because it is a roller support, there is only going to be a reaction force in the y direction, perpendicular to the surface on which it is rolling. And the other one, because it's a pin support, it can resist movement in the x and y directions. And so we will draw it as such. We'll call this one B sub y, and we'll call this one A sub y, and A sub x. And so something we want to notice here is that there's no external forces on this truss moving in the x direction. And so this force of the reaction force at A isn't going to have any loading on it. So if we sum forces in the x direction, we would get that A sub x equals zero because there's no other forces there. And something else that we can notice with this symbol of a truss is that because this truss is symmetrical and that load P is equally between point A and point B, their reaction forces are going to be half of P each. And by looking at this, we can notice that, or we can solve it out. And the way you would do that is I would start with the sum of the moments. And I'm gonna pick point A so that it cancels out these two forces and it equals zero because it's in equilibrium. And then you have point B causing counterclockwise rotation, which we will say is positive. So B sub Y, and it is three meters away from point A. So multiply by three. Then minus, because P is counting, causing clockwise rotation, which is negative. And so P times by 1.5, and so You'll add this over to the other side and then divide by three on both sides. And so that would be your P over two equals B sub Y. And so now we know that B sub Y equals P over two. So it's half of the load of P. And now if we sum forces in the Y direction, we will find that a sub y is in the positive direction, b sub y is also in the positive direction, so p over 2, and then minus our load p. And so p over 2 minus p is negative p over 2, you add it over to the other side, and you get that p over 2 equals a sub y, which is what we observed in the beginning. So this is the way I would normally do it. And with more complicated trust, you need to do it that way because it's a lot harder to do it by observation. But in this case, we could have. And so now we found our support reactions. Again, we said that the X component of that force, the reaction force at A, there is no loading on it, so it will remain zero. And now what we will do is we will go into the joint method and go joint by joint and solve equilibrium equations to solve for unknown forces. And normally that would be solving for internal forces of those members, but in this case it is given to us as what the max tension and compression can be. And so we will need to be solving for the unknown force of P. And you start going joint by joint 
looking for joints that had two or less unknown forces and at least one un one known force. And any of these members in this case, um, or any of the joints, will have less than two unknowns. But since we're looking for what P is, we're going to start with joint C. So we're going to say we're at point C. We're going to draw a free body diagram of point C. And we have our load P here. And we have our internal force, which the thing we need to observe about our truss is that because this load P is pushing down on it, these two members are going to be in compression because they're trying to push back up. So they are being smashed and that means they are compression and they are trying to push down on, on um, these support reactions and so that's going to cause this middle beam to be pushed out, meaning that this one is going to be in tension because there is a roller connection here that allows it to move back and forth. So the way we're going to draw these arrows for the internal forces of this member is in compression, which means that the internal force of the member is going to be pushing towards the end of the beam. So we know that the max compression is 1.5 kilonewtons. So 1.5 kilonewtons, and that's going to be in the same for both of them since they're both in compression. And then we need to get these into their components of the x and y direction so we can use the equilibrium equations to solve for what p is. And because we know the geometry of the triangle or the truss, we can do that because we can say that this hypotenuse of the triangle is 1.5 and then the x component would be this side and the y component would be this side and we will call this member B, C, so we'll call this side B, C sub X, and this side B, C sub Y. And this angle between those two is 60 degrees. And sorry that triangle is a little small, but if you solve, if you say that the sine of 60 degrees equals B, C sub Y, over our hypotenuse, which is 1.5. We multiply 1.5 over this side, and that is your y component of that force. So B, C sub y. And you plug this into your calculator, you'll get that this is 1.3 kilonewtons, and that is the y component of the force in that member. And so, same thing for the x, just change it to cosine of 60 degrees, that equals bc sub x, and that is going to be 750 newtons. So we changed from kilonewtons to newtons there just because we're below one kilonewton. This would have come out in your calculator as 0.75, but I just convert it into newtons and that is BC sub X. And so, because this truss is symmetrical, we know that the forces in the X and Y directions in this member are going to be the same in this member. And so, we can say that this member, we'll call it AC, so AC sub Y is the same as BC sub Y, and AC sub X is the same as BC sub X. And so we can now set up our equilibrium equations. So the sum of the forces in the Y direction equals zero, and that would be the Y components of both of these. So those are both 1.3. And then we have our load P here, acting as an external force on this joint. So P, you'd add, the, add these together and add this over to the other side, and you get that P equals 2.6 kilonewtons. So that is what we're looking for. We're looking for what P is, and we have it. But we need to check to make sure 
that the load in this beam, if P is 2.6 kilonewtons, that the tension in this member is not more than 2 kilonewtons. So we are going to go to joint A to check that. So here we have our free body diagram of joint A, and we found in the last at the last joint that our X component of the internal forces of this member is 750 newtons and the Y component is 1.3 kilonewtons and they're going this way because it is in, in compression so the internal forces are pushing towards the end of the beam. This member we said was in tension so its internal forces are pushing towards the middle of the beam and we had that the reaction force here was P over 2 which we've all already solved for because P over 2 is 1.3 kilonewtons. So we can label that here and then that makes sense because these two forces need to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction and they are for it to be in equilibrium. And so we're going to sum forces in the x direction. The sum of the forces in the x direction equals zero because it's in equilibrium and then you have your internal force of your member AB and minus 750 newtons from the x component of this force. And so you'll add this over to the other side and you get that A, B equals 750 newtons. So the tension in this member, AB, is 750 newtons, which is much less than the max tension, which is 2 kilonewtons. Alright guys, that's it for this video. That was a pretty simple example of how to use the method of joints. And I hope you found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them down in the comments. And if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer with Student Engineering, where my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you want more videos like this, please subscribe.